Well, it is, it is a very big day for me uh, personally. Uh, it's quite overwhelming. Uh, I never imagined as a, a small kid growing up wanting to fly to ever be in this position to be. Uh, first of all, I was very lucky to have the shuttle missions that I had. And uh, today to uh, be inducted into the Hall of Fame is just beyond belief. And you just toured Atlantis and looked around. What, what was it like seeing all of the other astronauts in there with you? You know, twenty some other astronauts, uh, Buzz Aldrin, all of them. You know. Well, I, to be honest with you, I've seen enough astronauts, but to see Atlantis is unbelievable. <laughs> you guys, I don't know if you've been in there and seen the complex so far, but Atlantis is that's going to be the most unbelievable uh, exhibit of the shuttle in the world. Um, it, it's gonna, it's gonna be in flight, basically in orbit, and then the payload bay doors will be open. You'll be able to see it to the payload bay. Uh, it's, it's, it's tremendous, and I'm, uh, I volunteer to be the back to do a, a walk through and make sure to check it out, make sure it's working okay before we let the public see it. But it's gonna be beautiful. Are you gonna? Well, I, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm not real excited where NASA is right now. Um, we don't have a vehicle that can take us to orbit. We had a vehicle that was going to be able to take us orbit, but we don't have it now because the administration decides that, I guess, space is not that important to them. Uh, I think that's the wrong answer. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to the next time we have a vehicle that American can get in, an American vehicle, and go to orbit and uh, visit our International Space Station that we built and go further. So uh, I, I hope we get back on track. I was so happy to have my first mission back in uh, 1992, and um, you never know if you're going to have a second one. And then I got my second one, and then I got my third one, and my fourth one. And then, as you all know, I had my infamous mission, STS-95, with John Glenn on board. And uh, the joke is, uh, John on your mission, or are you on his mission? So uh, I think I was the commander of that flight, but uh, that'll that'll be. Uh, definitely in my memory for a long time a really great flight but I tell you what uh, my last flight was a Hubble servicing mission and to be a part of the Hubble Space Telescope team uh, is truly uh, I, I really really uh, value that uh, that thing is such a, a magnificent machine uh, it's a time machine it's, we're just able to look back in time so far that it's unbelievable and, uh, and it rewrites the uh, physics books all the time when it as it learns more and more but uh, that's I'm very very proud of all my missions but uh, uh, the Hubble and the center of that mission is very very good. I think it's a culmination of inspirations. Uh, first of all I was uh, fascinated when I was eight or nine by the night sky and the Milky Way. Uh, we were also starting to explore space. Um, you know, I saw Sputnik go over uh, Alan Shepard, John Young, my parents thought it was important, my dad had a World War II veteran. This was about moving the nation forward and great nations explored. I was also reading, so science fiction like Jules Verne and H.G. Wells. And when we finally had a TV, I was watching Flash Gordon. So you bring all those things together, and it was just exciting to me, and still is. I mean, it was never about work, it was about a, a passion and a dream and, and helping to serve our country. I've ever grown into being a role model. I never thought of myself as being unique on the flight. Remember, I was looking out of my two eyes at seven men that were my colleagues and my crew members. I grew up with two younger brothers and a very supportive father. So my first image was, I'm just part of the crew. It was really the audience that would continue to point out the difference. And so we would joke among ourselves about being Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But I wasn't Snow White, it was the CDR because he had white hair. And so, uh, you know, it was really the people that were looking at it. I was just very fortunate to be with uh, five Americans, two Germans, and a Dutchman on a tremendously interesting point. Thank you. Well, in 2003, uh, when we lost Columbia, my crew was five months from So, we uh, hung together as a crew mostly. We helped support the families. We helped support the accident investigation. But um, some of the crew members were changed, but eventually in two and a half years, we flew. It was probably the most difficult time of my life as far as my professional life. Um, it was very difficult decisions to make. Um, at times, emotions ran high. Obviously, we lost seven of our friends, and that was just, you don't get over that. Um, but. I was committed to flying, and I remember telling my training manager, if it takes 10 years, I'm going to fly this mission. I am not giving up, but we're going to wait until we have fixed everything on the shuttle that needs to be fixed, so we, we are flying with 
a spacecraft that would feel very, very tough to be in. So it took a while to do that. And I think it pulled us all together in the end and made us a better, stronger team. Okay, I would say if you're interested in being an astronaut, do not be discouraged. This is a good time, especially if you're in college. Uh, there is a program, it's just not as visible right now. In fact, at this point in time, NASA is getting ready to announce a new class. Now, the current astronauts fly in the space station because they launch out of Russia. We don't hear as much about them. But there is really two programs coming up. One of them is to low Earth orbit, which is more private enterprise, flying our astronauts to and from the space station. The other side of human space flight is deep space. And that's the space launch system that is being designed by NASA now. They're building the Orion capsule for the astronauts to live. This is going to take us deep space, whether it's the asteroids, it will back to the moon, onto Mars, it will have the capability to do any of those places. So it's a very exciting time. I would major in geology if I was in college now and I wanted to be an astronaut. This is field experience as well as engineering and being the kind of person that can tinker with things and fix things, those are going to be important skills for future astronauts.